Why does feeding a starving patient cause cardiac arrest? This is one of the most counterintuitive high yield medicine concepts that will be tested on the USMLE. So let me simplify it. I'll start by asking you a question first. What electrolyte is essential for ATP synthesis inside cells and what hormone causes that electrolyte to shift from the blood into the cells? Because if you understand that, the whole mechanism will make sense. All right. So the electrolyte is phosphate and the hormone is insulin. Phosphate is critical for making ATP. You literally cannot produce ATP without it. And insulin drives phosphate along with potassium and magnesium from the blood into the cells. Now here's what happens in a starving patient. During starvation, the body adapts, insulin levels drop, and the cells shift to using fat and ketones for fuel instead of glucose. Electrolyte stores become depleted, but serum levels look normal because everything stays extracellular. Well, here's where refeeding becomes dangerous. When you give carbohydrates to a starving patient, insulin will surge, and that insulin surge drives a massive shift of phosphate, potassium, and magnesium from the blood into the cells. Serum phosphate crashes, that is called as refeeding hypophosphatemia. Now, without phosphate, cells cannot make ATP. The heart is extremely ATP dependent, and when cardiac cells can't produce energy, you get arrhythmias and cardiac arrest. The hypokalemia caused by the insulin makes it even worse by destabilizing the cardiac membrane. So, here's the rule in any malnourished patient, whether it's anorexia, alcoholism, or prolonged fasting, you start feeding slowly. Check phosphate, potassium, and magnesium before and during refeeding. Supplement aggressively and give thiamine before carbohydrates to prevent vernicus encephalopathy on top of everything else.